Oh, it's you again. Welcome back. In this week's episode of my yet-to-be award-winning YouTube series, YouTube Art School, I'll let you know how to study the right way for max results. Because based on what I've seen with the hundreds of artists that I've mentored over the last eight years, there's a high probability that you're doing it wrong. We'll look at the exact steps to follow to study as a complete beginner, a more advanced artist, and as an artist with a lot of experience, you know, who might feel maybe that you're plateauing. Three different levels of study based on where you're at in your art journey. As you improve as an artist, your approach has to adapt, it has to change. Unless you want everybody to get better faster, leaving you in the dust crying. I don't want you to cry, of course, so I got you covered. Quickly, let's get this class started. Alright, class is in session. Pay attention! Today, we're going to learn how to study the right way to avoid wasting time and make as much progress as fast as possible. Studying better is as close to a life cheat as it can probably get. It's like suddenly becoming more intelligent than everybody else. And lucky for you, you're about to learn all of this right here on YouTube for free piggybacking off of my decades of experience as a professional. <laughs> Just kidding. You really think I would reveal such important information for free? Come on, bro. I spent my entire career fine-tuning this stuff. No, we'll only continue once you've paid the class fee of either one like or one sub. I can't verify if you did or not though, so I guess let's just keep going. A lot of what we'll talk about today is exactly what I think about when giving feedback to my students. With feedback, one size doesn't fit all. It might or might not be obvious, but I always adjust my feedback based on the level of the student. There are some things that you can point out to a more experienced artist and they'll get it, whereas a more beginner artist might not. So let's break this down into three levels. The first level of studying being ideal for a new artist with little to no experience, and level three being ideal for a more experienced artist. You might already do this, either knowingly or unknowingly, but in any case, it's always useful to know if you're doing it right or not. If you haven't been progressing much though, this might give you a few clues as to why that might be. Start studying the right way and you'll see right away how much of a difference it makes. When you study the right way, you don't have to study as much, yet you'll make more progress. The cool thing with this is that it applies to anything you want to study as an artist. Heck yes. Okay, when you start as an artist, it's a whole new world out there. Where do you begin? What do you focus on? If you're only just recently started, your biggest hurdle will be to observe properly. I made a video some time ago focusing on observation, which I consider the most important art skill, so I would definitely give that a watch next if you haven't. Very relevant here. In a nutshell, the aim will be to go from just seeing things around you to actually observing things. Very different. As a new artist, chances are that you'll be pretty bad at soaking up information and retaining it. And that's what observation is all about. Observation is a skill like any other, and all skills, you know, start at zero. We've all been there. The actual steps to get this right would be to look at simple objects and try to draw them, either from real life, you know, things around you, or from photo references. The key here is that you'll want to spend about half the time just observing your subject. Don't start drawing right away. Spend a good amount of time staring at your subject, trying to notice different things about it that you might have never paid attention to before. Looking at its silhouette, how big it is relative to other nearby objects, what color it is, how that color changes when it goes from the highlight to the shadow, how shiny it is, how it fits within the environment. Can you see the top of it or are you too low? Can you see only the underside of it if it's floating above you, like, you know, something that's hanging? Take a good moment to get familiar with it. That step is super important. You'll be doing that a whole lot moving forward. So remember, it's the most important art skill. Spend some time working on it. Then, after you've gotten more familiar with the subject, try drawing it with a pencil. Glancing back at it every time you hesitate and focus on the line art first since that's the most important. You can try shading and coloring later once the line art part gets easy, but that's not nearly as important initially. Traditional or digital makes no difference. I think it's just maybe easier with a real pencil at first, you know? Fewer technical hurdles. So initially, keep it simple. Draw simple objects. And then remember, at first you're not really practicing drawing, you're mostly practicing to observe better. The drawing part will just help highlight what you should focus your observation on. Whatever you're struggling with the most, spend some extra time observing that some more. Don't worry about the time that it takes you though. Your speed is just a reflection of your experience, so you should 
be pretty slow at first. And that's level one. Seeing is for non-artists. Artists, observe. Start observing. Now at level two, when you're able to draw simple objects, maybe some more complicated subjects like people using references, you'll want to introduce some art theory to the mix. Art fundamentals. This is what this level will focus on. And if you don't know what they are, I have a video on the subject down in the description below. Check it, bro. So I recommend you learn a bit on all the various fundamentals. This is a big focus in my art program. All the fundamentals are worth looking into at this point, but more specifically, the fundamental of construction. I'll get back to that in a minute. The main thing that will limit your observation skill is your knowledge of the subject. If you've never played a game like League of Legends and you decide to watch a game on TV on Twitch, you'll probably click away real quick because you won't understand anything that's happening. Your knowledge of the game will be limiting how much you can understand. You know, learn the rules though, and it'll probably be a lot more interesting and you'll be able to extract more information from what's happening and you might actually have a good time. So do the same for your art. Learn the rules of the game, the fundamentals. So at level two, we'll be doing everything that we were doing at level one, but introducing some art theory to help push our skills further. And a moment ago, I was mentioning construction, since that fundamental is all about deconstructing what you see. Simplifying, abstracting the complex shapes of a subject into simple volumes that are easy to draw, like boxes, cylinders, and spheres. Those are some of the easiest things to draw, and that's what you should always start your drawings with, instead of going right into the details. Practicing construction is important because it acts almost as a filter for your observation skill. You can't observe everything, there's too much. So what do you focus on? What do you ignore when you look at references? Well, being good at construction means that you can look at something complex, like a human body maybe, and see only the simple volumes that it's made out of. Being able to see to spot those volumes, drawing them accordingly and then slapping on the details is the way to go at level two. I have another video specifically on construction, so I would definitely recommend that you check that out too, if you're still not sure what construction is about. Once again, link down below. So level one was just to observe the reference and then draw what you see. At level two, observe the reference, draw a simple construction for it, and then move on to the details and everything else that you're able to observe. At level two, the references can also be other artists or art that you know is technically good, AKA by professionals. Try to find out how they construct their drawings. You might pick up a bunch of tricks. I wouldn't do that at level one though. Anyways, as you practice studying art at level two, start with the line art first, then feel free to explore adding shading, color, etc. But always put more emphasis on the line art if you want to level up faster. Trust me on that one. Maybe a topic for another video. Now, I've been talking about how to study, but what to study in what order is equally important and very hard to find. But lucky for you though, if you've been searching for the best art education out there, check the link in the video description to learn all about my art program. It's on sale currently until the end of the month only to celebrate reaching 18,000 students. It's the most popular art program in the world, literally. You should check it out. You won't be disappointed. All right, back to the class. Finally, level three is where most advanced artists will find themselves. You'll have a solid grasp of all the fundamentals and the main focus at this level will be to educate yourself, to become a specialist on whatever you prefer to draw. If it's characters, well, study anatomy like a physical therapist might, looking at all the muscles, the bones, the proportions, differences between male and female, how things work in motion, when muscles are flexed or relaxed, etc. The more you know on the subject that you're trying to draw, the more you can observe and the better you'll get at drawing it. At level two, we would look at a reference, draw a block out or a construction for that subject and then further add detail. At level three, we'll instead start with the construction. We're flying on our own now. Still using references though. I recommend you give your reference a quick glance and then just get it out of your field of view and then try constructing what you saw as best as you can. If you ever have any hesitations, bring the reference back, get the information that you're missing and then keep going without until you need it again. The reference is now more of a crutch rather than the main source of information like it used to be at level two. Once the construction is solid, move on to the details, just like at level two, 
but challenge yourself by relying less and less on the references. Don't wing anything, but before you draw anything, try to do it from memory first. When you try not relying 100% on the reference and instead trust your memory, your visual library, trusting what you've learned so far, it helps make you even more receptive to relevant information. It makes you an even better information sponge, an art sponge. At this level, it'll feel like you're working on a big puzzle and most pieces are in place and you're just missing a few. Just like a real puzzle, the pieces get easier and easier to place as you progress. With each level, the learning pace should increase if you do it well, if you adjust how you approach studying. I'm in a fortunate position where I get to interact with more artists than most, seeing how they develop and what works in their education versus what doesn't work. What we saw today is the result of all those years of research and trial and error. That's how I teach and it works awesome for the vast majority of students. Level three is how I study art nowadays and I've never improved as fast as I do now. Because of course, there's always more to learn. I highly recommend that you give this approach a shot if you haven't already. So there it is. I think this is super relevant for artists of all levels and I hope it'll help if progress hasn't been up to the pace that you expect from yourself or if you're just starting and have no idea where to even begin. I hope it helps. Let me know in the comments if it does and if you stuck around until now, well, you just won yourself freebies. Well done. Last but not least, I just updated my extremely popular brush set with my custom smudge brush, the only one I ever use, and well, you can download the set for free with the link in the video description. Wow, c'est cool, ça.